place. Um, we were talking earlier today about how um, even in the message, uh, I believe it was Sunday, last Sunday, we talked about how the members are different in, inside the church. I remember uh, some of the old heads in the church, uh, old mothers or so, and and uh, I, I want to, uh, I'm going to call a name. I, I appreciate the Jacksons, uh, Apostle Jackson and Pastor Jackson and how they're, uh, I, I'm not a Facebook person, but my wife tells me that they're on Facebook praying uh, about this situation that the, the world is in now. And I remember in the old days, I want to commend them, but I remember in, on, in the old days that the, the mothers, uh, many of them are dead and gone now, but the mothers in the church were different. They would um, fast and pray all night. They would have all night prayer and everything else about the situation that's going on in the world now. Uh, and, but... Uh, we're a little bit different and I'm not saying these things on the air to offend anybody but um, it's it's my assignment to bring us all to include myself to uh, this level that the Lord is attempting to bring us into and I'm and like I said I'm not attempting to offend anybody with anything that I say but uh, we we should want to be as the Bible talks about in the book of Galatians chapter 6 we should all want to be and realize that we're supposed to be spiritual inside the church inside the church and, and uh, I'm just my assignment is to bring us to that level of spirituality inside the church not that we're not spiritual some of us are are spiritual but there's another level of spirituality inside the church and in fact you've heard me talk about um in the messages that i've i've preached and and some that some that i've taught on wednesday night talking about us talking we we do some good preaching and good, good teaching but uh and and i'm not against that either and i'm not against our good preachers and good teachers that's in the body of Christ. Um, we have many of them, um, and I believe they're true men of God, but to bring us all, and all to another level, and not saying that there's not some out there already, but to bring us all to another level, to that next, that level that the Lord is bringing us to, uh, in fact, is, is something that was started a long time ago. We just simply left it. It was started, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there was an outpouring. And in the outpouring, the church was activated, empowered to uh, not only speak the word, but demonstrate. And there was a great demonstration. To, um, and that's my assignment to uh, bring us to that level that we're meant to be in, to walk in. And uh, like I said, we were talking earlier about some of the old saints in the church man they there were there were some powerful saints in the church uh and and they had on the on the my uh lady ringham was telling me on facebook they had uh had down there um to list your favorite uh preacher i believe it is the list i i don't know she I don't know how it went. I'm I'm not good at that kind of thing. I was meditating at the time when she was talking about it, so I might not be saying it like she said it. But um, she, I, she asked me. She told me about it. And I said William Seymour, and uh, he's dead. <laughs> so he he couldn't list another person <laughs> behind him. If I listed him. The person that you list would have to list somebody, their favorite person, and he's been dead for a long time, so he couldn't list anybody, and so she went on to list somebody else, uh, and I believe Apostle Jackson and and um, Pastor Jackson uh, listed uh, us, and I appreciate that, but I I thought 
I thought my hero, one of my heroes, in fact, not my hero, but one of my heroes, and I knew I couldn't list Jesus, <laughs> so I didn't list Jesus, but I, I, I said, William Seymour, and uh, that was shot down, like I said, because he can't, he, if he came back and listed somebody, uh, we would all go on to glory. <laughs> But but I, I thought about him because I, I remember reading about him and how he would sit in his pulpit. And he, he was one of those different kinds of saints that was uh, so, so sensitive to the, the presence of the Lord is that, that he, he would go upstairs in the church and take a nap. And when they got off into out, out of the presence of the Lord and, and something was... Uh, going on that wasn't in the will of God, he he would uh, sense it, wake up and stomp on the floor and say, "Hey, that's not of God." And and I looked at it and I said, "We were we were like that in the church. We had a sense for the presence of the Lord." And 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 I read in another case where even when he sit in the pulpit, he would sit in the pulpit covered. He would cover his face. Why? Because he knew that he wasn't about to take any glory. It was all about the Lord. And, and that would be one of the reasons. And I grew up around some saints that were like that. Some saints that were like that, that sensed the presence of the Lord. And I knew people like that, that sensed the presence of the Lord so much so that, that when it went off, when, when the church went off, they knew it right away. I, I, cut my teeth uh, with people uh, like that and and somewhere along the line we lost it and but my assignment is to bring us back to it and further and further along because the church should be further along one of the things that I want to talk about tonight in in uh, in this is the kingdom and the reason why I want to talk about the kingdom and I, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm about to say. And if you just get this, you'll understand the whole thing. You'll understand. You'll it'll help us as a church. And I'm not talking. I'm not just simply talking to First United. I'm talking to the body of Christ, the body of Christ, because I long for being able to uh, to walk into any place and we're in the place that we're supposed to be in. I'm going to talk about the kingdom. And the reason why I want to talk about the kingdom is because uh, whether you know it or not, we're, we're a diff different culture of people. Um, your Bible talks about it. We're different culture of people. Uh, it was, I, I want to point out right off the bat, it was uh, to prove what I'm saying to that you understand what I'm saying. When in uh, Acts chapter two, when there was an outpouring of the Spirit of God, when heaven uh, made a a sound, and the saints of God were empowered, it made the saints of God in the house of God. It made the saints of God in the house of God uh, a different people, different from the world, uh, a different crew, and. What it did was it, it, the, the sound from heaven set the people of God apart, set the people of God apart as far as giftings and uh, callings, the giftings and callings. And so, in other words, our church is supposed to be a, a culture, a kingdom by itself inside the church. Uh, your Bible says, and I'm going to come back to this when I shift into an introduction real quick, like, but your Bible says something like this in, in Romans chapter 12, we talk about it all the time, be not conformed to this world. And so if we're not to be conformed to this world, but uh, be transformed by our minds being renewed, that means that there, there's a, a set of people that's conformed to this world which is the kingdom, their kingdom, the world's kingdom. And there's a set of people that's uh, transformed by the renewing of their mind. And so, in other words, there's a set of people in, in a kingdom. Uh, uh, I, I want to call this message the kingdom, the hood, the community. There's a, there's a, 
a set of people that have a renewed mind, and I'll tell you what I'm talking about with renewed mind, transformed mind, is that with this set of people with a transformed or renewed mind, you can talk different to them. You talk different with, with them. In other words, you can talk faith talk. But I find myself talking with church people, and you got to kind of taper how you talk to them because uh, they would say that you're crazy. Or, uh, talking faith talk. Are you following what I'm saying? And I remember a time, long time ago, that you could talk faith talk, and and the saints of God knew what you were talking about. Why? Because they they were from another world. They were from another kingdom in itself. They were they were renewed in their minds. They didn't talk like uh, what the world would fear and what the world would talk and what would be the world's limits were not their limits. Why? Because they were from that church over there, the kingdom. Uh, that the, the hood, the community, are you following what I'm saying? That could talk, faith talk. That, And what's faith talk? The woman with the issue of blood had to have, had to be from another kingdom, had to be from another world because uh, she went to doctors and doctors talked one thing. They talked one way and they thought she could be healed. But in another sense, when she shifted to a renewed mind, a kingdom mind, when she became a member of the kingdom, then all of a sudden she could say within herself. Now, saying within yourself around folks on your job, they would say that you're crazy, <laughs> that you could be healed, that you could be delivered. A blind man shouting, uh, wanting their sight recovered, uh, you'd have to have a renewed mind for that. Are you following what I'm saying? And so uh, you could talk faith talk to the saints of God. Now, but we're in a church now. We're in a church now where, um, and, I, and I mentioned in the message not long ago that, that members are different. With the old saints, you could talk faith talk. You could talk healing. You could talk deliverance. You could talk salvation. You could talk change. You could talk what God's going to do and and what God's doing in, in the land. And you and prophecy was believed and on and on. And, and the saints of God knew how to hold on to the prophecy. The old mothers used to say, you yet holding on, baby? You yet holding on? And, and the saints of God with renewed minds in the, inside the kingdom, inside the community, inside the world of, uh, of God, the culture of God knew what they were talking about because you were holding on to something and you believed God for it. Are you following what I'm saying? And, and, but in this day's time, the saints of God are just saints of God between whatever your service happened to be, 1130 to 130. They're saints of God and you can, you can talk faith to them inside the building, but once they leave the building, they're back to wherever I work again, whatever I do again, wherever I hang out. And that's my mind. I'm conformed to the world. Are you following what I'm saying? It's time that we, that we renew our minds, that we renew our minds for this revival that the Lord is talking about. And we talk revive talk. Are you following what I'm saying? And that we talk uh, faith talk, that we talk talk that the world won't talk, that we don't fear. Uh, saints of God fear everything. Uh, every, I said that backwards, uh, but the world fear everything. Sorry about that. The world fear everything. The saints of God shouldn't fear anything because, because he, he, we weren't given the spirit of fear. Are you following what I'm saying? I know I said that backwards, but we're backing up. And, you, you probably didn't catch on to me saying it backwards because it's, it's the way we live now. Are you following what I'm saying? And so, uh, and watch this. I'm going to kick into an introduction real quick. Like I've traveled all over the world. And through the world, through the world, uh, we've gone to different places uh, in Saudi Arabia and all over the, all over the world, in fact. And, and, and in a lot of those places... They had kingdoms set up, and in those kingdoms were specific cultures, uh, and they weren't like the culture that I was raised in, and so a lot of times they had to pull us in 
to briefings that tell us, okay, they don't live like you live and they don't talk like you talk and, and uh, don't use your left hand. Don't shake, don't shake hands with your left hand and on and on. Why? Because it's a, a part of their culture believes something else about the left hand and on and on. Don't look at their, uh, don't uh, look at their women, you know, and, and on and on. And, and they were peculiar uh, practices, but it was a part of their culture. And for you to live there, for you to live there, be able to operate there, um, be able to operate there inside the privileges, you had to adjust to their culture. You had to adjust to their culture. And so, um, and, but if you didn't adjust to their culture, you, you lived fearful the entire time. You were on edge the entire time. Are you following what I'm saying? And what happens with us a lot of times on a Sunday morning is we're on edge because, because we live in a certain culture and, and when the preachers start talking about faith talk and stuff like that, it, it puts us on edge because we, we're not believing it. That's not a part of our culture. But our culture is different. Well, uh, again, I'll point out, I'm, I'll show you in several places, I'll point out to you that we're, that there's a difference between us inside the body of Christ. We're a new creature. If you're a new creature, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. If we're new creatures, what are we new from? New from how we used to be and how we used to think, what we, how we used to talk, what we used to believe. Are you following what I'm saying? What we used to believe. And, and, and so now there's a conversion. There's a conversion of us and we're thinking different. We're talking different. We're believing different. Are you following what I'm saying? There's a culture change in us and, and uh, we don't, we don't talk the same way. We don't believe the same way. The same things don't scare us. Are you following what I'm saying? Don't scare us like they used to. Uh, we're a different kind of people. Uh, I talked about it in Romans chapter 12 that, uh, that our minds are renewed to, and we're not conformed to the world. Our minds are renewed. In uh, Old Testament in Exodus chapter 19 verse Five and six, Exodus chapter nineteen, verse five and six. God said, when He pulled the when He pulled the children of Israel out of their bondage, when He pulled them out of their bondage, He said, "You'll be above all the other people. You'll be and you'll be uh, above all the other people." In other words, in other words, you don't think like them. You don't walk like them. You you God's people. And that's that's why you're above. Uh, you 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 don't walk beneath your privileges. Are you following what I'm saying? You'll be you'll be a kingdom of priests. In verse five and six of Exodus chapter nineteen, uh, in First Peter chapter two verse eleven, uh, we're called strangers and pilgrims. We we probably need to read these verses because the, the also in these verses is covered. Um, something that we're going through now. It tells us that we, though we're pilgrims and strangers in this land, we have to uh, submit ourselves to the ordinances of men. In other words, in other words, I, I was looking at uh, Lady Rankin told me to turn to or turn to one of the channels on television, and, and there was a preacher on television saying, "I, uh, because you said." to do this because you said to shelter in place and and don't have church on Easter. I'm not going to have church on Easter. Well, that lines up with the scriptures because the script, this scripture says, submit yourself to the ordinance of men, whether it be kings or governors or whatever, submit yourself. And so, and so that uh, we won't be called fools. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? And uh, we, Obey the ordinances, and we'll be. And, and it also talks about we'll be within the will of God to obey the ordinances. And, and your Bible also talks about that in Romans chapter thirteen. In fact, uh, though we are strangers and pilgrims, 
we're strangers and pilgrims, we still uh, have to live. We still have to go uh, 45 on the Highway 49. <laughs> we we can't say, well, I you know I'm I'm saved and I'm 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 covered under the blood, so I can go 80. <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely be covered under the blood when you go down to the detention center. <laughs> Because the brothers down there ain't going to believe you covered under the blood, some of them. So anyway, what I'm saying is that, that we're new creatures and we're, we're under another culture. We're, under, we're kingdom people. Uh, we're kingdom people. We're above other people. I, I like something that's been kind of ringing in my mind over and over again. And it, and it just blows my mind when, when it said, they that are led by the Spirit of God, they have become the sons of God. Can you imagine being led by the Spirit of God? And what does it say? You're a son of God. Can you imagine? Uh, I, I, I don't know about you, but when I become a son of God, I, I'm a little bit different from you if you're not a son of God. Are you following the saying? So, so, so the saints of God are set apart from if you're led by the spirit of God you'll become the sons of God and being a son of God son of God almighty means that you're set apart you're sanctified you're set apart from uh, normal people so there's a, a kingdom watch this in your Bibles in your Bibles in uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 42 it, it said they they uh continued steadfastly in the doctrine of the apostles. And in other words, in, in, in verse 42, what it's pointing out to us is that when after there was an outpouring in Acts chapter 2, after there was an outpouring, there was uh, a people that were set apart in a special culture that now that now went by, that now followed steadfastly the doctrine of the apostles. In other words, they were a different culture. In other words, they weren't like the world anymore. I'm not saying they broke laws or they didn't follow men's ordinances and on and on, but I'm saying that they were a different kingdom. In other words, I'm saying that they were a set apart people. They were royal. They were chosen. Uh, they were chosen. They were royal priesthood. They were chosen people. In other words, they were a kingdom in they were a kingdom. In other words, what I'm trying to get to us, what I'm trying to get us to see is that that inside, when, when you've accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, you become different. You start to live different and you start to see different. You start to talk different. And so you are different and you're in another kingdom. What I'm saying is 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 the saints of God have fallen back and, and began to live in, in another world again, in another world and beneath their privileges again. But our privilege is to be kingdom people. What kind of kingdom people? In your Bibles, in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, in the kingdom of the, of the Son, in the kingdom of the Son, in the kingdom of Jesus himself. Are you following what I'm saying? In the kingdom of, of Jesus himself. And watch this. When... Uh, that's why, that's why in your Bibles, um, in your Bibles in the book of Matthew chapter 10, in Matthew chapter 10, um, verse 1, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, uh, Jesus gave his apostles, he gave his disciples power over devils, over sicknesses and diseases and on and on. Watch this. Not everybody had power over. Not everybody had power over those things. Are you following what I'm saying? But he gave his disciples power over uh, diseases and demons and on and on. And verse verse 6 through 8, he said, when you go into these villages, and I'm paraphrasing, when you go into these villages, tell them the kingdom of God is at hand. In, uh, in other, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, near. Why would he say that? He's saying that because 
because he's saying that because you see these gifted people come along and what I'm talking about, I'm, I'm going all the way back to uh, Acts chapter 2 again and, and trying to get us to understand that when there was an outpouring in Acts chapter 2, when there was an outpouring and we were, we were given gifts, we were given gifts, the gifts were poured out upon us. We became kingdom people. We became kingdom people, not living beneath our privileges. In other words, we, we became people who were empowered to live different from the world. We were given power against, against uh, unclean spirit. We, give, we were given power to heal and deliver and set free. Are you following what I'm saying? That, and that's another culture all in itself. Are you following what I'm saying? And, and so we, uh, we're beneath our privileges if we go back and attempt to live in a place where they fear all of these things again, where they're living beneath their privileges. Are you following what I'm saying? In other words, in other words, what I'm saying is the saints of God, watch this. And this is why I'm saying this. This is why I'm saying this. This, this is why I'm attempting to put the saints of God in the rightful place. Are you understanding what I'm saying so far? I'm, I'm saying that we're gifted people. And being gifted people, we, we're set apart. We're set apart. Exodus chapter 19, as I read, we're set apart. I know that's Old Testament and people will say that's Old Testament. But um, Romans chapter 12 says, says we're, our minds need to be renewed. Um, <laughs> and, and we're new creatures. Our minds need to be renewed. Why? Because... Because we're gifted people. We need to live set apart. We now have gifts and we're privileged people to, to live above and uh, to live above and we're above. And so, in other words, we're people uh, who, who have special talents, who are given talents and given special talents and live in a specific culture. If you had something that if, if you're wealthy, if you're wealthy, and I'm poor, you live in a different culture from me. You live in a different place from me. You're living different from me. And God's people are wealthy, wealthy with giftings, wealthy with the grace of God, wealthy enough that we live in a different kingdom, live in a different hood, live in a different community. Are you following what I'm saying? Now watch this. This is why I'm, I'm trying to point the saints of God to this area, to this area area to get you to see this right away watch this in your bibles in ephesians chapter 12 chapter 6 that is verse 12 i think i'm trying to go too fast and i'm seeing stuff and i gotta back up and redo it but in ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 watch this the, the bible points out that we wrestle not against flesh and blood that's not talking about the world and those that are conformed to the world. That's talking about these folks that, that want to live beneath their privileges, that want to be ordinary members of churches between 1130 and 130, want to be members. But watch this. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And the enemy would love that we attempt to wrestle against flesh and blood. And that's what the world would attempt to do, wrestle against flesh and blood. But watch this. It, it points out that the enemy is gifted. The enemy is powered. And so with the enemy, in the enemy's kingdom, some of us may not understand when I even use the word the enemy. We've been so far away from kingdom talk so long. Hey, let me see. The devil. The devil. Watch this. Principalities. Powers. Rule of darkness of this world. Spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, wait a minute. If I got to sit in a place, and God put me in a place... And I'm going to sit and be ordinary, worldly people. Are you following what I'm saying? 
and there's a kingdom over here that I got to come against and I got to stay saved and their principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual weakness, wickedness in high places and I'm sitting over here and I can sing good. No, I'm a kingdom that has power against diseases Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 against diseases against uh, demons and on and on and so I'm a different culture I'm a different community are you following I'm saying and so watch this I'll, I'll, I'll give you this and you you some will say I'm foolish in saying this I was uh, sitting in my place of and and I called it out of one of messages that I did not long ago I called it uh, to be sequestered but I used the word sequestered just in case we didn't understand sanctified <laughs> I was just simply saying sanctified sanctified myself and, and so I was sequestered and when I was sequestered I, I, I like to I, I don't like our news as much. I watch our news every once in a while on television, but I don't watch our news that much. So I just turn to, and I'm going to give a shout out, a commercial for a TV station. On my television, I turn it to 322, which is Japanese. Uh, the whole program is, is, is Asian. And so that's what I turn it on. And I turn it on sometimes because... I'm not looking at it anyway. I'm, I'm reading my Bible. I'm talking to the Lord and on and on. And sometimes I just turn off everything and just don't have anything on. But I just happen to have it on. And what I did was one of those times I saw that they were praying to the rice God and praying to the, that their harvest be great and all this kind of stuff. And they were going on about their business in Japan and going on about their business. And, and they said... and. 2011, they were going on about their business and praying to their rice guards and gods and doing all this stuff. All of a sudden, a tsunami came up, a wave 30 feet tall and wiped out thousands of people out of nowhere. Now, me, I saw that as a spiritual attack. I saw that as a spiritual attack. And, and I saw how they handled it they sent down submarines and everything else to, to try to find out how that happened. But myself, I'm looking, saying, that was nothing but spiritual. And there's something I can share about, share with you about this day and time and what's going on now that I can't say right now. I'll, I'll wait a few lessons. Wait a few uh, more of these Wednesday nights and Sundays before I share with you uh, what what happened to me not long ago. But in that case, I saw what could that be? These people are going on about their business and all of a sudden a wind just come up out of nowhere and a wave come into and they say into places it's never been in before ever in their life and and they're still trying to explain it today that was in 2011 and it's 2020 now and they still don't understand it all I do I, I understand that just as much as I understand legions <laughs> I understand that as much as I understand the prince of the air I understand that as much as I understand a man having the entire city bewitched. Are you following what I'm saying? I understand that as much as I understand a woman with a spirit of divination, a young girl with a spirit of divination. I understood it. But I'll leave it at that. I believe the ones that are sanctified the ones that are set aside the kingdom ones will understand those things when the world don't understand and that's why he tells us to be not conformed to this world because we'll be able to discern what they won't be able to discern are you following what i'm saying 
and we'll be able to discern what they're not able to discern. And so I was sitting there looking at that and saw that's principalities and powers. But we don't talk about that anymore. We just let them keep praying to their rice God. <laughs> and searching, searching and trying to figure out how in the world did that happen? Like I said before, there, there's a group of people that when there's a kingdom with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, there's also a kingdom who have power over all of those things. Are you following what I'm saying? I, we don't say it much, but I remember the white building. You didn't walk in there with any kind of stuff. Because they would discern. They would discern and say, wrong spirit, got to go, got to get out of here, wrong spirit. And guess what? It left. It left. It had to. Why? Because the kingdom was there. And that kingdom couldn't clash with the kingdom that had power over it. Are you following what I'm saying? And so I believe the saints of God uh, are going to sit back in their kingdom, in their hood, in their communities. Are you following what I'm saying? In their communities and discern. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 says, there's a prince of the power of the air. And I believe there's, there's uh, a kingdom that sit with power. Watch this. That sit with power and 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 no diseases, no disease, no enemy can, can walk in the midst of this kingdom. Now, because they don't realize they're, they're part of a kingdom and, and that kingdom attempts to sit in the wrong kingdom. Are you following I'm saying being conformed to the world? And attempt to sit under the world. There's a whole kingdom trying to sit and become a part of that kingdom. But I believe that that what we're doing is re the revival again is pushing them out of that place back into their rightful kingdom, rightful community, right hood, right place. Are you following what I'm saying? Whereas the church will never be the same. Are you following what I'm saying? The church will never be the same. And, and so, watch this. I, I understand that because in your Bibles, in Matthew chapter, remember, we always talk about um, the works that Jesus did. We'll do those works and greater works. Watch this. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, Your Bible says that Jesus taught, which means he proclaimed. He taught, he, he proclaimed, but he explained. Now, he proclaimed in his preaching because it says he preached and he taught. He proclaimed it. He said what you could have. He said what you do have. He said what you do have. Uh, what what your privileges are, but in the teaching he explained them. Are you following what I'm saying? Teaching in teaching they learned what he was proclaiming, what he was heralding, what he was publishing. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And what was he doing? The message was about the Bible says, your Bible says in in this same verse it says the message was about the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom. Is that what it said? It was about the gospel of the kingdom. What gospel of the kingdom? Yeah, the good news of those folks that's sitting in the kingdom. The good news is he published it. He explained it. But wait a minute. The verse goes on to say, and he demonstrated. 
Why? Because he is not, not just publishing it, explaining it, but it's also demonstrating. Why? Because the kingdom will not only talk about it and teach it, they'll demonstrate it. Are you following what I'm saying? And so there's a kingdom that not only talks, not only uh, explain, but demonstrate. In other words, they sit under the power of God. Are you following what I'm saying? Sit under the power of God. It, and so the revival is bringing the saints of God back to sit in the kingdom. To understand that, that wait a minute, I'm in the world, but I'm not of this world because I'm from the kingdom I'm above I'm a son of God and being a son of God what I talk about I demonstrate are you following what I'm saying what I talk about is we demonstrate why because our kingdom is supernatural your kingdom Conform to this world is natural. But the kingdom we sit in is supernatural. So bring whatever you have that attempt to limit me. We're supernatural. We'll demonstrate. Are you following what I'm saying? And so the gospel, in other words, the good news of the kingdom is Wait, not just talking about it, not just explaining it, but being it. Are you following what I'm saying? And so again, I point out to you, and I'm about done. I point out to you that, that we're those that sit in the realm of God. And can you imagine? Uh, it doesn't even make sense to sit in the realm in the kingdom of God. Remember, we talked about how that in Matthew chapter 10, verse, what was it, 6 through 8, he says the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of heaven is near, is nigh. What he was talking about is that, that when these gifts are poured out, there's going to be a kingdom of, of there's going to be a, a, a whole group of folks that sit with this power. Are you following what I'm saying? The church is going to be full of this power, going to be full of God's power. What? Wait, maybe this will help you. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Who's going to do his will? His kingdom. Who's his kingdom? Them folks. Sitting in his kingdom. Are you following what I'm saying? Those folks sitting in his kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In other words, the kingdom is near. And, and if you got something that you need the kingdom to do. What you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Are you following what I'm saying? That's kingdom work. And so the kingdom that the saints of God sit in, the kingdom that the saints of God are missing and not separating, not sanctifying, not sitting in, not, not living within their privileges. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Not living with the, within their privileges is a kingdom that's supernatural. I know I'm repeating myself. That's supernatural in itself. So in other words, in this revival, and my assignment is, and I know this message was simple, but I tried to keep it simple for us to understand that, that we're not even of this world. I tried to get us to understand Back off and stop trying to fit into a place that you weren't meant to fit into. When God called you, and 
when God called you, he renewed you. He renewed you. When God called you, you became his. And, and now, let me go back to what I said, and I'll put it to the side for a minute. Let me go back to what I said. It's, it doesn't even make sense for you to be a child of God in the vicinity of God, in the realm of God, and worthless. Especially when he said something like, uh, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Are you following what I'm saying? Especially when he said something like this, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Are you following what I'm saying? And so that there's a kingdom of people in the image and after the likeness of God. And you mean tell me in the image and after the likeness of God can't handle the principalities and the powers and the spiritual wickedness? Are you following what I'm saying? What I'm talking about is I believe the revival is going to put the saints of God back in their place again to understand. Now, I'm not talking about faking it because we've been faking it as well. <laughs> I, we've been faking it as well. I'm not talking about faking it. Let, let me tell you what I'm talking about with faking it. Your Bible says in Acts chapter 10, and I'm done, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how Jesus of Nazareth was anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power went about doing good, healing all of those oppressed. Uh, you heard me talk about this before, oppressed of devil. And the word oppressed can also translate to having dominion over, having dominion over. What I'm saying is when you're living beneath your privilege, and you don't realize that you're another kingdom in a supernatural kingdom, that you're in, you're in another community altogether, a community with power. You don't, you don't understand when the enemy's attempting to oppress you, to take dominion over you, that you've been told to have dominion. Are you following saying subdue and have dominion? And so in other words, you've been empowered. You've been empowered to have dominion, not for something to have dominion over you. Are you following what I'm saying? And so our assignment is to put the church back in its place and have dominion. Not be dominated, but have dominion. Subdue. Are you following what I'm saying? Subdue. And so that will cause you to understand Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, and how he, <laughs> he preached, he taught, but he didn't just preach and teach. He went out and healed, set free. Are you following the same? And so there's more to it than just talking about it. There's power to it. And so in closing, in closing tonight, I'm going to say that the revival is going to put us back in a place of power, of dominion, of subduing. Are you following what I'm saying? The church building is going to be for more than the only power in the place is the power that uh, come from the power company. And you got to pay a bill on it every uh, every month, but the but the power comes from above. Are you following? What I'm saying we're done. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise for all that you're doing and all that you're about to do inside this place. We thank you for revival. We thank you for what you're doing. We pray, God, that though the message was simple tonight, we pray, God, that your people heard and that we had a shifting to that kingdom, to that community, to that place, oh God, that place of revival, God. We pray, God, that by the time we get back from this sabbatical, that, Lord, the church will never be the same ever again. We pray and give thanks to you for this revival today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for following our ministry. We pray that you were encouraged, enlightened, and empowered. Join us Sundays at 1130 a.m. and Wednesdays at 630 p.m. Central Standard Time.